warming results in extreme weather. These are not movie scenarios. High carbon emissions caused by human activity lead to global warming and unprecedented extreme weather. Slow down global warming and achieve carbon neutrality. Good morning, everyone. Chris, Adam, David, dear friends. I can feel the energy here that will light you rethink and make Hong Kong and the world better. Today, I would like to share with you four T. First T is about target. I think this event is timely. Tomorrow, it will be Hong Kong's policy address to be delivered by the chief executive. Climate change will be one of her key topics. And COP26 to be held at, in Glasgow, the UK, soon. So if we are going to pick the most important target that we like to work together, climate change must be one of the topmost issues. Last year, President Xi, representing China, made a pledge. China, as one of the biggest carbon emitters in the world, would like to reach the carbon emission peak before 2030, and then meet carbon neutrality before 2060. It's not easy, because from the peak to carbon neutrality within 30 years is a record breaking in the world. But we have to do that. And then, Mrs. Carrie Lam, the Chief Executive of Hong Kong, SAR, made another prep for Hong Kong and for us. We'd like to meet our carbon neutrality target before 2050. And we need to work together to meet that target. In fact, Hong Kong has already reached our carbon emission peak in 2014. About seven years ago, we already reached our peak emissions. During that time, our average carbon emissions per year is about 6.2 tons by now, according to the latest figure in 2020, on average, each of us is down to 4.5. And we have already set the 2030 target. Around that time, our average carbon emissions will be down to some three tons. So we are in our journey to meet our target step by step. But that's not enough. So that's why in her policy address last year, he mentioned that this year, the Environment Bureau, headed by me, would be very busy. We are going to launch, and we, are, we, we did launch some, and we are going to launch another one within this year. In total, four environmental blueprints. I will talk about them briefly later. Second thing is about timeline. Like many other environmental challenges, there are certain time frame for us to meet, in particular, decarbonization. So many economies in the world set the carbon neutrality target up to around 2050. Hong Kong is one of the economies to do so. In fact, our pledge is slightly more aggressive. We add the term before. Given our economies and our collaboration, we think that in the coming time, we can even make the target shorter than 30 years before 2050. That is our ambition. And I would like all of us to share that, we think, and meet that. So time is short. And we actually don't have that 30 years, because the coming 10 years will be the most crucial, because the transformation and rethinking process, including infrastructure, buildings, etc., would affect the 2050 scenario. So now, and the coming 10 years would be very crucial. So the forthcoming climate action plan to be updated very soon will share how we would like to do 
within, say, 10 to 15 years, so that we could have the midterm target, and then we can go smoother towards the target before 2050. The third T is about technology, thinking, rethinking. And I would like to share with you the three blueprints that we launched within this year that embodies how the government, not only my bureau, but also other bureaus and departments are working together to rethink and to capture the latest technologies and mindset. The first one is about the waste blueprint for Hong Kong up to 2035. In the past, when we talk about waste, it's about landfill capacity. But this time, we changed our mindset. It's not only to reduce waste, but also how to work with the carbon neutrality patch so that we can do the waste, waste reduction at the same time to support the carbon neutrality patch. We are also having some innovation. For instance, this cover of the uh, leaflet shows a new recycling stores in town. Um, the first one was opened in last November. By now, there are more than 20. And uh, within a few uh, further months in the, in the near future, 10 more will come. It can support more than eight times of recyclables. And we would ensure that all those recyclables would be somehow handled in Hong Kong to turn them into resources. So that's certain breakthrough. Certainly, the forthcoming municipal solid waste charging, Lapsop Sulfi, to be implemented around 2023 will push the business and everyone to do more waste reduction as source, recycling, etc. The second blueprint launched in March this year was the first of its kind in Hong Kong. It's called the Hong Kong Roadmap on Popularization of Electric Vehicles. It's important because globally, we are considering to decarbonize the electricity generation and then to electrify the transportation, vehicles, ferries, etc., so that we can meet the carbon neutrality vision. So the roadmap highlights where Hong Kong is, also what are the existing policies, and then the new policies. Firstly, what is the Hong Kong's progress about electric vehicles' popularization? In fact, it's pretty good. Last year, one out of every eight new pirate cars was EV. That is the highest ratio in the entire Asia, based on my understanding, and one of the three top most popularization level in the world. The good news is that this year, due to different reasons, including our taxation transformation, this year, one out of five new pirate cars. So it's amazing. But certainly, there's still worse challenges. For instance, we mentioned a patch. Before 2035, no more conventional pirate cars could be really registered in Hong Kong. That's on par with European Union and many other economies. But we are more aggressive. We also bar the, the hybrid vehicles as well. Because in Hong Kong, given our small territory, Pure electric vehicles, even so today, are good enough to serve Hong Kong. On top of that, these old pirate cars have somehow banned already for some years in Hong Kong. So we have had many other economies. But the real challenge is more about the commercial vehicles and buses. Uh, in Hong Kong, we are having very hot and humid climate, and also the top topography is challenging. So we are going to take a few more years' time to test out different types of electric commercial vehicles and buses, including single-deck buses, double-deck buses, public light buses, taxi, goods vehicles, and even those um, motorcycles, etc., so that we can meet our zero vehicular emission before 2050. So that they are more rethinking in this roadmap. The third one is about clean air. In the past decade, Given all the supports, the major air pollutants in Hong Kong have been improved by 40 to 60 percent in the last decade. Again, it's not easy given our regional uh, considerations. And we identified that the forthcoming challenges, roadside emissions, marine emissions, 
and also ozone. So this roadmap also embodied the new thinking. On one hand, to further improve the local and regional air quality, at the same time, to be in line with the carbon neutrality patch so that we can get both objectives together. As mentioned earlier, the policy address tomorrow will mention more about how we are going to meet the carbon neutrality patch. And within this week, we will formally launch our fourth environmental blueprint on climate change, including deep decarbonization towards carbon neutrality and also how to strengthen our climate adaptation and resilience. We also support innovation. So we have the Green Tech Fund. Uh, the first batch of results will be announced today because we set up the Green Tech Fund last year. The response has been encouraging. More than 100 applications received so far, and we are going to approve them step by step. Because in order to improve the environment and also to meet the carbon neutrality patch, we do need rethink and innovation. And the government would like to work with you through funding and other initiatives so that we can meet the patch. So I mentioned the target, timeline, and also technology and thinking and rethinking. And the last T is together. Only through together, we can meet the carbon neutrality patch and make Hong Kong and the world better. Thank you.